Hey, it's James, Father's Rights and Resource, hashtag how I got custody. So I'm gonna start off with a example or story of a situation I was dealing with. Somebody is being deprived of their kids and they asked me what I do because they just filed a contempt motion and I said file another contempt and also look and see if there's a custodial interference or parenting kidnapping law in your state. So this person finds an article and then sends it to me. And like, I'm just supposed to read it for them. I mean, I already gave them the answer, contempt or fine a custodial interference law. So they said, I sent you an article. I want you to discern it. I said, I, I, I told them, find a law in your state. I didn't say find an article. This is the problem with people nowadays. People don't listen. If I say there's an elephant over there and you run around and say, hey, there's a cat over there, we're talking about two different things. I don't understand why people don't get this. If I say go look at a law, then somebody goes and gets an article commenting about whether there's parental kidnapping or not and there's no law cited in the article, you didn't find a law. Okay, we gotta use, 90% of the problem with this stuff is people don't even use common sense. And then when they get information, they ignore the words of the information and they don't even listen to like the words that I say. And it's not even my words. I'm telling you where to go get the answer for yourself. And then people don't go get the answer. Like if I say, go look on, you know, newyorklegislature.com and then you go look at New Jersey. You didn't listen to what I said. And now you're lost and you're wasting more of my time because you didn't listen to what I said. So if you're asking somebody for something, listen to their answer and then make a note of it. So then this, then I went and I Googled my first pop up on a Google. I found an article that cited the law in this person's state about, I think they called it custodial interference. I don't think they called it parental kidnapping. But they cited what custodial interference was. And I gave them the article. I said, read the law in here. So then this parent calls the cops and the cops say, oh, it's just contempt, go do contempt. And like I say in all my videos, cops give legal advice, you should report them. So the cop blew this parent off. So the parent calls me back or texts me back and says, the sheriff said it's just contempt, do a contempt motion. There's no, because that, that you know, the other person has court order time, it's not parental kidnapping. And then I asked this person, did you cite the law to the cop when you talked to him? And they said no. So they were asking me to read an article about the law and there's no law in there. Then I take the time to give them an article that cites the law so they can look at the law and read it and know the law. Then when they confront the cops and ask the cops to enforce the law, they don't cite the law. 90% of the time, you guys are your own worst enemy. Sitting here serving up information for people and nobody listens to me. Not nobody, but a lot of people don't. Why do you think I tell you to go look at the law and then I give you a link after you were too lazy to do it. I give you a link to the law. And then you talk to a law enforcement officer and you don't bring up the law. This stuff is insane. And one of the most insane things about it is you guys don't want to help yourself sometimes. Even when you get served up all kinds of free help for me, you don't listen. You are your own, no wonder you're in some baby mama drama or baby daddy drama crazy situation. You're too dumb to use any freaking common sense to get out of the situation in the first place. And then when you're in it, you make it worse because you don't listen when people give you good information. Come on now, open your ears a little bit. I know there's always going to be people who are going to be people who are just basically intransigent and don't want to listen to you and want you to baby them and want you to do it for them. But for crying out loud, man, people been wanting me. I, I, I did a video about, you know, a guy wanting a free consult through text message. And we went back and forth 20 minutes. He's crying that he only asked one question and he's so insensitive that I, that I, that I, that I'm offended that he's wasting 20 minutes of my time. The dude asked two or three questions. He said, I only asked one question. He wanted to be babied. He had a welfare mentality that you owe it to me to do this for me.
because I did a consult with you a while back. Then I get people who will sit down and do a consultation with me and they say, man, there's no way I'm going to remember all this. Are you writing it down? No. Why would you think if you're talking to me for an hour and you know nothing about this stuff, why would you think that you wouldn't want to get a piece of paper and take some notes? That's insane too. If you go to a class and you don't take any notes, you expect to be ready for the exam or a test in a couple weeks? This is common sense stuff that people are missing out on. Not taking notes. And then some people at the end of the console, they're like, oh, can you, when we get off the phone, can you write me an email and summarize everything you said? No, I can't. I don't remember half the stuff I just said. I'm not reading from a script. I'm giving you answers off the cuff. And then you want me to take some extra time after our appointment to sit down for 30 minutes and summarize everything? Why don't you care a friggin' damn about your own kid where you have the gumption to actually get a piece of paper and a pen or get a typewriter or a computer and type what I'm saying or record what I'm saying? Some of you just don't give a damn. You think somebody, somebody owes it to you to hand it to you. You know, being a man or being a grown-up isn't about being the biggest, toughest, and baddest and flaunting and flexing your chest and fighting people and stuff like that. Being a real man is having some courage and having some wherewithal to take ownership and responsibility. Or, mother, if you're not going to take ownership of this stuff or take some responsibility, like, I don't hand answers and solutions and winning arguments to people. I tell people where to go to do this stuff yourself. Now, I got all kinds of tools and stuff. You know, I got one video on my online store that everybody needs to know about the rules of evidence. I got all kinds of packets that help you get going and give you a huge head start. If the packet isn't, you know, totally ready and applicable to your case, it gives you an outline, the spirit of the argument, the way I incorporate the law, and you fill in your own law. But there's some stuff you got to do. I had a guy call me the other day. He had, he was showing me some paperwork he did. It was filled with awesome case law that he did some research and found himself. He just needed me to give him some tips here and there on a couple of things and look at some case law that he cited. I said, well, this is wrong because of this and that. This doesn't apply. You got to read every single word. You overlooked this. I just had to tweak what he did. But the dude had the balls to do some research and take some time out to do some research. He didn't call up and say, oh, James, fix this and give me an answer and sit back like a lazy bum and not want to exercise any energy and whine and cry. This is so hard. This is so hard. If it's too hard for you, quit. Give it, make, make life easy on yourself. But calling me up and trying to, you know, suck every answer out of me and then just go to court and say, well, James said, that's not how this works. I'm here helping people get answers to work on their case themselves. You think I can really talk to hundreds or thousands of people over the course of months and me give them, me act like an attorney and be on their case? I'm showing people where to find stuff to do it on their own and pinpoint certain things. So when I say something, like every single word out of my mouth, people don't get it. Every single word out of my mouth is important. And people sit around and wait until after I've talked for 20 minutes, like, oh, can you repeat that or can you send that to me? You should have been writing it down. I'm not saying this stuff just to toot my own horn. I'm not saying this stuff for my own good. I'm done with my case. My daughter's 21, in case you hadn't noticed. I'm having, I'm, if somebody told you where there's a bunch of gold and you're the first one to find out and the person says, I'm only going to tell you once, give me a call and you call them and you don't have a piece of pen and, a pen and paper to get directions, you're a dumbass. Do you think your life with your child is more important than gold? You would pull out a pen and a piece of paper to call somebody who said, I could tell you where to find some gold or treasure or hidden treasure or some money stashed somewhere or the secret to get, you know, a million dollars in five minutes because there's this billionaire who wants to give it away and he wanted me to be generous and just find somebody, the fifth person to call me, I'll give you instructions. Say, a hundred percent of people, even stupid, airheaded goofballs would know to get a pen and paper. Why would you not want to get a pen and paper when you're taking notes about information that I'm telling? This isn't everybody again, but why? Why would you not have the gumption to think, oh, I better write down. I'm going to talk to James for an hour. There's no way I'm going to memorize everything. Man, he's saying some good stuff. 
Oh, Jay, I'll, I'll tell him at the end of the conversation to write, to type up everything. You only paid me for the time you paid me for. So listen, take notes on everything that's important, which is everything that comes out of my mouth. Like when I, when you watch a video of mine, you can't have a minute go by where there's just a void of, of, um, inapplicable or wasteful information. Everything I say, I'm not wasting my breath on here just for the fun of it. I don't even need to be on here. I could do word of mouth locally and still probably survive and spend more time, you know, reaching out and, you know, having signs up at a fair or on a corner street or whatever. I used to do that kind of stuff and get plenty of word of mouth around here. I'm trying to get the word around the country and half the people don't, they just, oh, that sounds nice. <clears throat> half the people are like, Oh, I got a couple hearings coming up. I'll talk to James a month after my hearing and see if he can help after I get royally screwed. No sense of urgency. No sense. Man, James knows what he's talking about. That's awesome. That feels good. Like feeling good is going to fix your case. You got to go to court or go to the parent or talk smack to the other side and play the leverage game and get something done. So don't just listen. I mean, first learn how to listen to what I'm saying and don't change the words that I'm saying. If I say go look up the law and then cite the law to the cops and you don't cite the law to the cops, guess whose fault that is? It's probably, you know, the, how, how corrupt the system is? People won't go in there and argue the stuff that I talk about in my videos and they wonder why they lose. That's more aggravating than the bias in the system. That people won't go in there and do... The way to change the system is for everybody to go in there and start arguing stuff like the science, the data, my number one video on YouTube that talks about the number one argument for 50-50... That stuff is golden and nobody's doing it. That's insane. It's more insane when you guys don't do what I'm talking about. And especially if I get, if I have the, if I'm gracious enough to answer your text with an answer or go Google something for you when anybody in sixth grade can Google what I'm telling them to Google and find what I'm Googling, but everybody wants a quick fix answer in the one shot. So the person I was talking to, they did one Google search and didn't find a law. Then they send it to me and ask me to go look for a law in there. When you read it, you don't see a law. All you got to do is get off your lazy ass and read it. You are your own worst enemy most of the time. You go to court, you lose, you get creamed, and you quit. I got creamed three or four times. I didn't quit. I got full custody in seven months. And I, you guys know a hundred times the information that I knew. You're without excuse. So... Listen, and don't change the words of what you hear. If you don't understand the words, get some clarification or get an appointment. This is all for you guys. And maybe you don't like the tone that I'm talking about, but just like a parent needs to chew a kid out after they do the wrong thing over and over and over again, or a coach does it or a boss does it. You're grown enough. You've had a coach or a boss yell at you once or twice in your life. I'm doing something for you and your kids and I'm not calling anybody out or embarrassing anybody. So take heed to this and learn to fight for your kid. And it's not even my kid. And I'm more passionate about your kid than you are. I'm sitting here doing more work on your case than you are. The lack of effort on people's part to want to pay attention, take notes, or apply what is said is way more infuriating than the bias in the system because as long as you're being a lazy bum, the system ain't changing. So what? why do you have a welfare mentality feeling entitled that the system should change for you because it's not fair? There's people out there who bled and died for a more fair system in this country, in other countries, for a certain cause in America or in another country. And you're sitting here crying and pouting and not lifting a finger for your own life with your own kids. You don't even have to care about anybody else's kids, just yours. One job. You got one job. So anyway, listen, take notes, and apply what you hear. Or don't. I don't care. I'm, I'm getting exhausted caring more about your kids than you do.